be in the workshop session. <laughs> My name is Hai, I'm with Saturday Sunrise. Toastmasters is no part where the sun shines upon us. <laughs> so before we begin, I would like to cover a few housekeeping rules. Lunches are only available to purchase at 11 a.m. today. After that, if you have not purchased lunch, what will you do? We have to go get your food somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> if you have already bought your lunch online, please check in at the front desk to get your ticket. Please turn off your cell phone and put, do not put on the vibrator. And make sure to sign in the attendance sheets that I will cir be circulated. And at the end of the section, please remember to fill out the evaluation forms. And they will be collected at the end of the session. And we really appreciate your feedback. And now, it is for my great honor and pleasure to introduce to you to our two of the most extraordinary presenters. Without further ado, our first speaker is Jeremiah T. Henderson. He is a professional speaker with over 25 years of experience. He has been in Toastmasters for 19 years and is the current president of Saturday Sunrise Toastmasters. He is a board member of both the Citizens for Administrative Accountability for Underperforming Schools and the Youth for Positive Change. He is also a member of Phi Beta Sigma fraternity. In addition, he has extensive background in financial markets, sales, and in education, <coughs> and served as a high school math teacher and as instructor for the Northwestern University Department of Public Safety. He is a former producer and host of the radio show Jeremiah Seth which air on 102.3 FM and former Ken TV host and producer of the program Progress Unlimited. He is an author, personal development trainer, and a creative speaking and creative speech writing coach who transformed his client from ordinary to extraordinary. And now, you know his name, you know his game. Students 
itself to be a product of the Toast Master Educational Program and believes that it works and if you work at it, he is an entrepreneur and is the Chief Encouragement Officer of the Awards Company Recognition and a seventh company that he started in 2005 after being let go from his corporate job. He spent 20 plus years in a successful sale and marketing career in the food industry working for both small and Fortune 100 companies. And now, uh, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you our distinctive Toastmaster, Mr. Toastmaster Jerry Evans! Mistakes, but 
They don't care because they're sleeping. Another thing, they don't ever have to worry about getting invited back. <laughs> Great thing about getting a board speaker. Now, let me show you the next one right here. You see these people right here? See, I believe they kill people. Board speakers, they should be punished. They should be punished. They should be executed because they are hurting people. Wouldn't you agree? Yes. They should be executed. But let me move right into my presentation. I'll probably give you the first one for that. Over the years, over like 30 something years, 25 something years that I've been a speaker, I've traveled around, I've, I have heard numerous speakers. I've heard good speakers, I have heard poor speakers, and I studied them. And I would sit back and study their styles, I would watch their movement, I would watch their stage dynamics, listen to their voices. And the great speakers, I tried to determine what was it about them that made them so great. And only after many years I found out what made them so great. And in this presentation, I put a few of the things down. I can't cover everything in this short time, but some of the basic things that I found that makes a speaker boy. And one of the things is this. Great speakers, they know their audience. They take time to find out who they're speaking to, who they're addressing. They, they get the demographics. What's the age of that group? What's the gender? Okay. Uh, what profession? What's the cultural background? You get all the information you can about that group. And if you call to speak, ask the coordinator. Say, who? Tell me about this group I've been speaking before. If not, ask the executive director. I need to know a little bit about these people. What are their interests? What are their needs? What are their abilities? So once you know that, you can hone in on these people that will help you determine what material you want to what, how are you going to present it? The material that you're going to bring. Very, very, very important. The wrong material for the wrong crowd. You're destined for a speech that's going to fail. You might be the greatest speaker in the world, but the wrong material to the wrong crowd, you're going to be dead. They'll hate you for it. <laughs> I believe you. <laughs> yeah. okay. You have to choose the right message. Determine the correct message for your audience. Let me give you an example. A speech to a bunch of high school seniors would not be appropriate for some old elderly retirees in the retirement home. It wouldn't work. So you have to be careful. You have to craft your speech for that audience. Now, if you try to give that speech, the one the speech that you were going to give to the high school seniors or the high school young people, and you gave that to those elderly people in the retirement home. And let's say you're you're really into you're really into uh, uh, vocal variety, not vocal variety, but gestures. And you're very animated. You're almost like Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins, he gets me tired. I watch him for 15 minutes and I'm exhausted. <laughs> High energy, never stops. I'm, you know, just exhausting. So if you're giving a speech like that and you're doing, let's say, three cartwheels and a Chinese split, I don't think that will go over too much with that group of people. So choose your audience. Learn what they're all about. Everything you can find out about that audience. Ask them, even go and meet with some of the people. Say, hey, I'm, pres I'm presenting today. Tell me about your company. So get every bit of information you can. When you choose the right material, that means you have to do some research. You can't be lazy. Research, research, research. Choosing the right materials. Two minutes. Choosing the right materials mean, means that you've done some research. If you're speaking to a sophisticated group of people, high earners, in a highly technical field, and you're very general, and you're giving a speech about things they know everything about, you will offend them. Because they said, we already know this. Why are you here telling us what we already know? But if you make that mistake, here's what you do. Well, I thought I would do a little bit of review. Even though we're great, it doesn't hurt to do a little bit of review. Do you agree? And now, you've already set the tone. I just want you to do a little bit of review. But whatever you do, in choosing the material, Choosing your audience, never underestimate the intelligence of your audience. Never be condescending. Never get up there and have them think that you think you are smarter than them. It won't work. If you do that, when you walk away, you'll hear them whisper. They'll say, oh, man, I don't know about him. You know, he, 
thinks he's a cheese, he thinks he's a cheese, but he's nothing but the snail. You see what I'm saying? Choosing the right message. And before I go into uh, the meat and potatoes of my particular performance, my study here, I'm going to bring Gary back on, and then we got to come back to this. The three channels of communication. Thank you, Jeremiah. Thank you. 
could mean whether one of those people live or die, it will kill you over what you heard. How many people have said to you before, don't talk to me like that, don't use that language like that with me? It gives you an idea how powerful words are. See, the words we use paint the picture that they hear. Words, phrases, sentences, how you link those things together. It was John F. Kennedy that once said, the only reason to give a speech is to change your word. I believe that. So that tells you, you base the question, then why do we even get up there and give a boring speech? Proverbs, which is in the Holy Bible, states that death and life are in the power of the tongue. Absolutely, that is absolutely true. You can change lives with simply the words that you say. Now let me give you, let me go to vocal and visual, and then I'll give you, I'll demonstrate how you use these principles. Vocal then is your vocal variety. That's the, your voice. Your voice, the pitch, the tone of your voice, and the variation. You should vary all the time. Speed, pitch, volume. Raise the volume, then you lower the volume. Okay? Breathe. Take time. Pauses, strategic pauses will allow you to get a point across. If I say something that I think is dynamic, I'll say, that really hurt me. Now breathe. You have to breathe. Use your vocal voice. Breathe. You're sighing. They hear, they feel all of that. Don't overlook how powerful your voice is. Vocal variety. I don't let white tips also, if you have a very shrill voice that's unpleasant to the ear, you should be careful to speak more slowly. And when you start to speak fast, you get excited, the pitch goes, pitch goes up. You're going to be breaking eyeglasses and doing all that. You get sued if it's like that. And also, one word. I must tell you, if you give a speech, I learned this in broadcast, and you should always speak in your lowest, most comfortable voice. The baritone voice is the greatest. There's regionalism in the speech. According to the people in broadcasting, the people that in the Midwest, we speak the most perfect English, the perfect tonality. It's not colored. It's not flavored like the people in New York or the people in the South. But even if you speak that way, you can use that to your advantage. I've heard many people with this other man says, man, I could listen to them all day long. And there are others, man, I want them to just get back on the other side of the base of Dixie line, man. <laughs> <laughs> Verbal, vocal, practice that a lot. Practice it. The best way you can practice that is to read poetry, read books, read dramatic reading. If your Toastmasters do the dramatic reading, isn't it? And practice it. If you do a dramatic reading, so you don't have anything else to do. You only have your voice. See, if you were speaking to a blind audience, you can't, you don't have the third component. You don't have the visual. They can't see you. So everything you project is in the voice. I tell you, please, please, if you work on nothing else, work on these three skills. They're free. You don't have to pay anybody for it. Work on those skills and not the visual. Your complete body is your visual. Everything. Now, I've seen a lot of speakers, they just they'll go from one side of the stage and be here, and they'll be here, and they use all of those dynamics they've learned. They say, if you speak about your grandmother, then then it's your grandmother over here, and then if you spoke to her, and you get the next part of the speech, then and I remember my grandmother, you put one over there because it's supposed to make you remember that the grandmother was all over there. I, you mean, I thought oh, that's just a lot of them on I don't know. If it works for them, it doesn't work for me. But, Visual, visual, body language. Use everything. In the past, you might want to go back. In the future, to the side, to do this. Okay, you can use your feet. Now, I'm not a big believer in getting off my feet. I've seen speakers fall down from the ground. I'm going to say, oh, get up. <laughs> this is not the place where they got to be. Hey, falling up, foaming at the mouth and everything. I'm going to know what it's up It's fine. It just doesn't work for me. And see, those kinds of things, they're good. They're good. But you can't do that if you're given the commencement address at heart. <laughs> they will run you out of Dodge. You will get arrested. The sheriff will come and arrest you behind you. You can't do it. Use this, use this carefully. Make sure they're not phony. Most a lot of people give speeches. A lot of people give speeches. And then they say, well, what can I do? What gesture can I use to mimic this? If it's not natural, leave it at home. Yeah. Okay? You 
want natural, natural, generic, okay? You don't want fortified. You want it to be natural. If you're angry, you're emotional, the gestures will follow. Now, one last thing about the facial expression. So many, I've seen so many speakers overlook that. See, the message is in the eyes. So if you are angry, you want to portray that, you can use everything. You can use language that demonstrates anger. You can lower your voice. You can raise it and lower it. And then you can look at people and frown and say, no, I don't like that. I don't like that. Back off. I'm telling you, it takes a little bit of acting. If you want to learn how to do that, watch the comedians. They are good. They are good. Look at such uh, comedians like what's it, Bill Cosby. See Bill Coffee, you can sit on the stage, something happened, you just look just like that. People just laugh. It's in the eyes. But I didn't want to tell you. Now, when you put all these together, put all of these together, and you know your audience, you can't do what I did today in all audiences. I did that to have a dramatic effect to show you how you do creative things, to break people's preoccupation. And I just, you know, I was just like you said, what is this fool doing? Don't come back. <laughs>
this week just as an example. First of all, I just want to touch on one thing, and that is teapot, the power of your topic. Because when you come up with the title of your speech, all of you have heard, or if you haven't, you've been sitting on a rock and rolling in a cave somewhere, if you haven't heard Barry's speech about the Jedi, and the speech that he gave was called Symphony. Well, when he gave that speech called Symphony, and truly every speech that we create should at least be some type of symphony or some type of masterpiece, but a masterpiece in progress. So here's what I want you to take away from this is that think of your speech as a song. As a song. Whatever your favorite song is. And what you write down are the lyrics. And how you say it is the music. The color and the texture and everything that adds power and impact. Because if we think of the greatest speeches of the 20th and 21st century, it wasn't what they said so much, but how they said it. Let me just give you two examples of that. I gave a speech at Jeremiah's Club, Saturday Sunrise. And I have an opportunity to go around to a lot of different clubs in the district. And several people in this audience were present at that meeting. The title of my speech, now it's 80% or 90% African American. The title of my speech was called My Life with the KKK. <laughs> now, just as you heard that now, think about the feelings and the emotion that that might bring up in your mind about what that means. The same way if you read a book title, you look at the cover, you don't know what's in the contents and all the pages in between. That speech had nothing to do with what you think it was. It was about my life with my three uncles, Kill Me, Call Me, and Kenner, <laughs> which are southern colloquial names. My grandmother had no idea how she came up with them, but that's just one example. Another example would be I gave a speech called the dreaded F word. So now if you think of that letter, <laughs> I bet you weren't thinking of fun, fabulous, fantastic, phenomenal, any of those. So if your speech title, it's important for you to give some thought to what the title of your speech is, just like Barry gave his speech symphony. And then he added music to it in the background to elicit that emotion from the audience. So think about your speech title. Jeremiah talked about props, and that's the last thing I'll do because we need to wrap up here. Is in terms of use of the props, let me give you an example of quickly some different props. You know, when we're speaking and we're doing a presentation, it's kind of like giving, you know, it's kind of like offering vitamins to the mind. Because you have invested your time this morning to come here and to not only enrich your mind, but also your heart. If you're giving a speech, I give a speech about Toastmasters as an example. And I was talking about that I was positively addicted. And I said some people are addicted to nicotine. Some people are addicted to hard drugs. Some people are addicted to coffee. I think all of us are probably addicted to some extent to chocolate. I love chocolate. So, you know, using props judiciously when they are congruent with what you're talking about can really aid and enhance your speech. Jeremiah had, for example, he and I had a lot more slides this morning, but we become the PowerPoint. The PowerPoint isn't the point. And a lot of us who do like, perhaps maybe do a lot of technical speeches and other things, you know, you rely on using PowerPoint. And you may want to kind of wean yourself away from that and then go back to the preparation part where again, you come up with a subject topic for your speech that you really think about that. Invest yourself in it. If there's three things named that worth speaking. That's to get into your subject, to get the subject into yourself, and then lastly, but most importantly, to get the subject into the heart of your audience. Because it's not about us. It never is. Because then we get self-absorbed, and it's about me, it's not about the audience, and it's about the audience and the message that we bring to them. 
So wrap up my part of it. Personal energy, as I said in the beginning, enthusiasm, excitement, and then what are the nine P's? Remember the nine P's real quick? Prior and proper preparation prevents poor performance of the person putting on the presentation. So now, Jeremiah, he's going to wrap it up and we'll summarize it. And we're going to take a short Q&A. So whatever questions you have that are going in your mind, Jeremiah and I will give you our contact information. We will email you all the presentation, both his and my slides, and then certainly reach out to us with any questions, any comments that you have. Jeremiah.